Hello and welcome to the final week of season 19, Season of the Seraph, which kicks off on February 21st, 2023. So for our final week, let's have a look at our legacy rotation, starting with the loot rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on week 4's rotation with the Scatterhorn armor set and Pathfinder armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun, Fractathis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle, Cryoshura Milo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon, Vulpicula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow, Wolftown Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle, Iotaurus Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Scout Rifle, Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle, Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword, Still Syllabus Z14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm, Spoiler Alert. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. On Europa this week, Phylax the Warrior will be the Empire Hunt, the Asterian's Abyss will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Agility. On the Moon, the weekly story mission should be a Mysterious Disturbance. The Trove Guardian and the Wandering Nightmare Hawkis are both located in the Anchor of Light. The nightmare hunts this week should be Fogoth, Fear, Gaul, Rage, and Tanix, Isolation. The Dreaming City this week is at a medium curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Davilion Mists and has the Oracle Engine mission for the next week. The Blind Well features Hive enemies and the Plague Kregar, with the Chimera Garrison being the Ascendant Challenge located over in the Chamber of Starlight Lost Sector. In addition, and for the last week, the weekly Throne World reset also refreshes the pinnacle drops for the Wellspring activity and the Preservation mission. This will be the last week for you to complete the Vox Obscura replayable exotic mission and any triumphs and rewards tied to that. And the final week to complete the exotic mission, Operation Seraph Shield in the Helm. The Witch Queen weekly story mission is the last chance, where the modifier is Martyr, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Golgoroth, called Gazer Maze. The Gaze Holder must stand in the Pool of Unclaimed Light when swapping the Gaze. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Gatekeeper, called Strangers in Time. Players must defeat the Praetorians and Wyverns at the same time. The Deepstone Crypt Challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. The Last Wish Challenge this week is the third encounter, Morgoth, called Forever Fight. Players must not kill the small ogres during the encounter. Your Pinnacle Raid will be the Garden of Salvation over on the moon, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Embrace, called To The Top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclops that spawns near the Consecrated Mind. The second encounter, Spire Defense, called A Link To The Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened Buff at the same time. The third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called Zero To One Hundred where you must fully fill each Conflux with 30 motes within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of motes. The Pinnacle Dungeon for this week will be the Pit of Heresy over on the moon. Next up, Challenges. We have now had all 75 challenges over the first 10 weeks of the season. As a reminder, if you complete 72 out of the 75, you can get a large pile of Bright Dust to spend at the Eververse store in-game. Here's a few that you might have missed that you might want to get completed in the next week. Week 8 challenge for Trials of Osiris. Win 20 rounds in Trials of Osiris for a Trials weapon, challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Week 3's challenge for Team Scorched. Defeat 40 Guardians in Team Scorch for challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Week 6's challenge to acquire the Crucible Velisex Pulse Rifle Ornament for challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Week 8's challenge to acquire the Gambit Velisex Pulse Rifle Ornament for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. 
and Wheat Tend Challenge Vanguard Ornament. Acquire the Vanguard Ornament for the Velus X Ritual Pulse Rifle or Challenge XB++ and Bright Dust. And speaking of Bright Dust, we have our final Eververse for this season for the week of February 21st, 2023. Available this week for Bright Dust, we have the VR Exploration Legendary Emote for 700 Bright Dust. The Redline Torpedo Exotic Ship for 2000 Bright Dust. The Harpy Cry Entrance Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust. The Polished Sea Stone Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Ghost Fist Bump Exotic Emote will be available for 3250 Bright Dust. The OU Rare Emote for 400 Bright Dust. The Drill Down Shell Exotic Ghost for 2850 Bright Dust. The Externalization Exotic Sparrow for 2500 Bright Dust. The Dynamo Current Cask Ornament for the Hunters. The Thunderous Impact Helm Ornament for the Titans and the Arclight Hood Ornament for the Warlocks, each for 1,200 Bright Dust. The Open Hands Exotic Weapon Ornament for the Lorentz Driver Exotic Linear Fusion Rifle for 1,250 Bright Dust. And finally, the Taurus Legendary Ghost Projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily Legendary Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of champions and burns you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or you're using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Tuesday, February 21st will be the K1 Logistics on the Moon for Exotic Helmets, Solar and Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Wednesday, February 22nd will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for Exotic Boots, Solar Elemental Shields, Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Thursday, February 23rd will be K1 Revelations on the Moon for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Friday, February 24th will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Chess, Solar and Void Elemental Shields with the Solar Burn, Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Saturday, February 25th will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Helmets, Void Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Sunday, February 26th will be the Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Boots, Solar and Void Elemental Shields, Solar Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, February 27th will be Perdition on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc and Void Elemental Shields, Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Lead the way. Our 12th and final featured Nightfall of the season will see us face off against the Mad Warden in the Warden of Nothing Nightfall over on the Dreaming City where you have a chance to get a pinnacle engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 100k or more. This Nightfall is a free-to-play Nightfall. You will be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept mods. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 4 Barrier, 4 Unstoppable and 2 Overload Champions with 15 Void Shields. Masters and GMs will have 10 Barrier, 7 Unstoppable and 4 Overload with 10 Void Shields. Your Adept Nightfall modifiers will be Empath, Enhanced Radar, take increased damage from melee, Martyr, Exploding Units have more health, Acute Solar Burn, plus 25% solar damage dealt and plus 50% solar damage received. Hero modifiers include all previous modifiers, extra shields, champion's foe. You will face barrier, unstoppable and overload champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics or equip anti-champion mods to your arm armor to defeat them. These mods come from the seasonal artifact. Combat acceleration. After damaging a target with a weapon many times in rapid succession, you will regain ability energy for your melee, grenade and class abilities. The base cooldown time for these abilities is lengthened. Legend modifiers include all previous modifiers, Shocker, Goblin Spawn Arc Pools, Air Superiority, Flying Units do more damage, Equipment Locked, you will not be able to change your equipment after this activity starts, Shielded Foes, you will face combatants with Void Shields, Activity modifiers may add more shield types. Master modifiers include all previous modifiers, Champions Mob, this mode contains additional champions, Famine, Master Specific, all ammunition drops are significantly reduced. Togetherness, 
master's specific, health regen is higher near others, and attrition, master specific. Slow regen and regen wells appear after defeating enemies. And grandmaster modifiers, limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. Join in progress disabled and extinguish. If your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Your grandmaster modifiers do not include pestilence, togetherness, and ashes to ashes. But your anti-champion artifact mods for this week's nightfall are anti-barrier bow and pulse for one energy, unstoppable hand cannon for one energy, grenade launcher for seven, and low entropy superconductor, where stasis and arc melee abilities stun unstoppable champions for one energy. Overload scout rifle, submachine gun, auto rifle, and the grenade mod Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, where void and stasis grenades disrupt overloads, all for one energy. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the kinetic bow Wishender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle Arbalest, the new kinetic pulse rifle Revision Zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's Vow, the solar heavy sword the Lament, and the titan exotic gauntlets Second Chance which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For unstoppable, the kinetic fusion rifle Bastion, the kinetic hand cannon Malfeasance, the solar energy sidearm Devil's Ruin, the void heavy bow Leviathan's Breath, and the hunter gauntlets Athras Embrace, which have a chance to stun an unstoppable champion with their empowered weighted knife. And for overload, the void energy bow Le Monarch, the arc energy linear trace rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots the Secant Filaments, which when you drop an Empowering Rift, any weapon that is fired from inside the well can cause an Overload Champion to be stunned. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week will be the Heavy Grenade Launcher, the Wendigo GL3. The Wendigo GL3 is an adaptive frame grenade launcher with a base blast radius of 50, velocity of 29, and handling of 41. It can roll with Golden Tricorn, Cascade Point, Full Court and Frenzy, with Chain Reaction, Impulse Amplifier and Auto Loading Holster. It has the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health, and Omelon Fluid Dynamics, where the weapon has increased reload and stability for the top half of the magazine. Next up, Lord Shaxx brings Team Scorch to the featured Crucible playlist for the last week of the season. Delightful! Team Scorch is a 6v6 PvP mode where all players wield a Scorch Cannon. Equipped weapons and abilities cannot be used in this game mode. Movement abilities e.g. Lift, Jump and Glide, Sprinting and Emotes can be used. Players are forced to use a Scorch Cannon that cannot be dropped. The Scorch Cannon has 100 ammo, which is replenished on respawn. Matches have a 7 minute timer, players have a 3 second respawn timer, kills give plus one point each the first team to reach 60 points wins if the timer runs out before the team reaches 50 points the team with the largest score wins the players current and longest streaks are shown at the top of the screen below the score also this is the final weekend of trials of osiris as trials tends to go on hiatus for a few weeks at the beginning of a new season so this will be the last time to finish off saint 14's reward track and collect any loose engrams as a reminder, Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 PvP high stakes variant of elimination. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked to a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you that match for your passage card. By competing in trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. Before we go, if you have enjoyed this content and found it most informative, then please hit that subscribe button and check out our show over at twotitansandhunter.com. We would be greatly appreciative. But before you go, we do have a few more things to go over for this week. 
This week, we'll see your last chance to complete the finale event for the season, where the players who own the season pass and have completed the More Than A Weapon quest will gain access automatically upon logging in. And as this is the final week of the season, we will see a return of double XP across all playlists. Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible. So if you need that extra boost to get your rank reset or Velisex Pulse Rifle and Ornaments, then this will be your last chance to do that. Bungie would also like to inform you that there will be some popular items from the 30th anniversary celebration returning to the Eververse store from now until the end of season 19. So if you're interested, check out the Eververse store front page. Don't forget to claim those unclaimed Prime Gaming rewards, as starting February 28th, any unclaimed rewards that are over a year old will be removed from Amanda Holiday's inventory in the Tower Hangar. Also, with this being the final week of the season, don't forget to collect all of your Season of the Seraph Pass items, any items left over from the Season of Plunder Season Pass from Bungie.net, plus your reward track items and engrams from Banshee44, the gunsmith, Shax, Crucible, Zavala, Vanguard, Drifter, Gambit and Saint-14 Trials before the end of the season as they will reset and you will lose all items when the new season starts. And this is your last call Triumph Hunters, you only have one more week to complete any missing 2022 Moments of Triumph, so don't miss out on getting those in-game and Bungie store rewards. You can still support the Bungie Foundation in supporting the earthquake recovery work in Turkey and Syria. By donating $25 or more, you will earn the Compassionate Concentric Emblem. Head on over to the link on screen to donate now. One final thing to mention is that Destiny 2 will be brought offline for 24 hours starting at 9am PST on February 27th, 2023 in preparation for Lightfall. Which means we only have 6 days left this final week, so be sure to wrap up everything you want to achieve during the Season of the Seraph before the downtime begins. During this period of downtime, players can pre-download Lightfall on all platforms, but be advised that the download file will be large, but this new installation will improve load times and overall disk space usage will be smaller afterwards. Once the game is brought back online and Lightfall has launched, signing queues are expected, especially during the first hours and peak play times. Keep an eye on at Bungie Help and at Destiny 2 Teams for more information. And that's it for the final week of Season of the Seraph. We'll catch you next season. Alonzi. Guardian down.